This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In this video, we're going to look at the concepts and terminology for the relational database. The relational database is the type of database the majority of organizations have used over the last 40 years or more to maintain data about their organization, their product, their activities such as sales, transfers, and we're going to learn a little bit more about those terms and concepts. First off, we have entities, and that's a relational database term. When you actually build the database, an entity becomes a table in the database. You have attributes that are things that describe an entity, and attributes become columns, also known as fields, in a table in the database. You have relationships between the entities. These are defined by constraints within the actual database. You have a unique identifier for every row in a table. Think of this as your social security number in the US that uniquely identifies each person. You have to have a unique identifier for each row in a table. So even though they may have common values, like we have three people named Robert Johnson, we'll know exactly which of those three we're referring to or working with because of the primary key. And then you have the foreign key. And the foreign key is what we use to relate data in two different tables. So a foreign key field is in one table and the value in that foreign key field is used to relate to another row, another record, and another table. In the previous database video, DB01 for Apex 3, we saw that this is the database that we have built that we're going to use to build a web application for an animal shelter. But let's take a minute and look at the relational terms and how we came up with this database. So I briefly described in a previous video the background or scenario for which our database and our web application are being developed. And this was about creating an animal shelter so, so that a community could take care of animals that have been lost or abandoned and hopefully find homes for them. So when we look at the animal shelter, we realize that there are several things we need to keep track of. Obviously, we need to keep track of dogs. And there are certain things we'll want to know about those dogs, like the category. Is it a chihuahua? Is it a collie? Is it a German Shepherd? Things of that nature. And there are medical treatments, things that happen to the dog. So I'm going to do medical treatment. But there might also be training or grooming. So things that happen. And these things that are done are done by employees and volunteers. So we have volunteers. And what you do if you're building a database from scratch is you create a long list of words. Some of these are going to end up being columns within a table. So we have employee, and then we have what we're going to call client, which is a person who's either bringing an animal to the shelter, one that they have found, or a client is someone who's going to adopt an animal from the shelter. So this would be the client. So how do we know what is a table? It is not always obvious, and there should be a lot of discussion before a database is built so that you're confident that you're building something that will be flexible and usable for a long time to come. Making changes to the database itself can cause an awful lot of problems and take a lot of time and money once you've built applications that use that database. So how did we get from this to this? Okay, 
So let's start with people. So with people, I said that we're going to have employees, which we have a table for, but we also have people who are volunteers and clients. In general, volunteers, employees, clients all have common attributes. These are things that we want to know about them. First name, F name, middle name if there is one, last name, address, zip. Those are things that describe any type of person that we have, a volunteer, a client, or an employee. So we have put that in its own table. It's not unusual to look at a working database from 20 years ago and see that we have separate tables for the client and separate tables for employees. But the fact is they do share common attributes. And it, let me show you here real quick. Let me pause the video and pull up a diagram. What I'm looking at is a data model for a database provided by Microsoft called AdventureWorks. So if you're working with SQL Server, you would have this probably already installed, and it's just to give you a practice database as you're learning some of the features of SQL Server, SQL Server. Notice in Human Resources, we have an employee table with certain attributes or columns in the table, but that's linked to person. So we have a person here, and we see there the things that we see in our database first name, middle name, last name, and then that can be linked to the customer. So we see in this data model, which has evolved over time, that we're now tracking person attributes separate from things specific to our employees. We do have a separate employees table simply because that gives us a place to put data specific to employees and we can control access to this data much easier than if we put everything into a single table called persons. So any one person might be an employee. Every employee is a person so they're going to have related information in this table. We'll know where each person is if we have a zip code because the zip code table will provide the city state information for that specific zip code. We'll know that this person is the one person we're referring to. If we have three Robert Johnsons, we'll know which one it is by this purse ID, a unique identifier. This is a unique identifier which then becomes in the table itself is referred to as the primary key and that's why you see this P here. And you see this P over here. That's an employee ID that's going to uniquely identify a row in the table. So we can have employees with the same name but we'll know which one we're referring to based on the employee ID. Then if we look at transactions so there are things that we want to keep track of that happen at the shelter. We have things such as intake. An animal is brought to the shelter and we take it in. We have things such as placement where somebody has adopted, chosen to adopt an animal. So we're transferring them out to that home. We might also literally transfer to another facility. And there might be other types of transactions. We know which transaction we're dealing with because, again, we have a primary key that uniquely identifies every transaction. We'll know which employee processed this transaction because of the foreign key, which is very, very important. This is the basis for the relationship, these lines between the tables, the foreign key. So we have two relationships here. If we look at the person's table, one of these persons who's classified as an employee is going to process this transaction. They'll be the one working and taking in the animal. Another person, the client, will be bringing the animal in. Perhaps they found it or they have to leave it for some reason. Or they want to adopt it if it's a transaction where we're placing. So these fields here are linked to client ID is linked back to purse ID for the person bringing the animal in. 
purse ID is linked back to purse ID for the person who's an employee processing the transaction. Animal ID is a foreign key which links over here to the animal table. And the animal table has all the attributes or the columns in the table that help us describe that animal, such as category, it's a dog, it's a cat, or breed, it's a pit bull, it's a German shepherd, it's a chihuahua. And we've got primary color, we've got mix, size, so on and so forth. These are the attributes that describe this entity. In the database, this is the table animals, and these become the columns in the table. We have activities that are linked to an animal. So animal ID is the primary key, and activity ID or act ID is the primary key in this table. But animal ID here allows us to link this activity. Vaccination, surgery, training allows us to link this activity to a specific animal. I'll briefly say you could argue that activities are the same as transactions and this could be a single table that they, we don't need a separate table. For my purposes, for the tutorial, I simply wanted to have more tables in the database, but I could certainly see taking this and including activities as transactions. So in some ways in the database, in a couple of instances, I have designed the database because I want to illustrate some things in future videos. But it's more common when people first start designing databases to probably make too many tables, such as a client table, an employee table, and a volunteer table. So think about this. If you had a volunteer table and you had a client table and you had an employee table, what about the employee that adopts an animal? Are you going to put all their information into both tables? You don't want to do that. With a relational database, we want to absolutely minimize the data redundancy, not putting data in more than once into the database. If data is redundant, then over time the quality of the data deteriorates because we might update the address for our employee who had adopted an animal and we didn't update it over in the client table. So the closer you can follow the relational rules, the greater the integrity and the flexibility of your database over an extended period of time. Remember the naming conventions for related videos in this tutorial series. The Apex videos are 00, zero through 12, 14, whatever, however many videos there are. If there's a related database video for a specific video, let's say I've at Apex 02, then that name is going to be, for the database, is going to be Apex 02 DB, and then the number of that video series. Because for this one Apex video, I might end up having two or even three videos about the database concepts. There'll be some Apex videos that have none of these, but this is how you can access the database videos specific to that Apex video. And the same thing would go if I have Apex, let's say 03, I have something specific I want to cover in SQL. That would be SQL and 01 through SQL 03. So I would have 1, 2, 3. All of these relating to the Apex video 03. Hopefully that'll help.